Welcome back to Canadian Formal. On today's episode, I have been shopping. More specifically, I have been thrifting. So I'm going to show you how to take an old, worn out pair of chukka boots and make them look brand new. Stay tuned. Good day and welcome back to Canadian Formal. I'm Curtis Allen and I have a passion for making the men of the Great White North look and feel their very best. So today I have been thrift store shopping and I came across a pair of chukka boots by Cole Haan that are in some desperate need of a little TLC. And that's what we are going to do today. So let's jump right into it. Welcome back to the old uh, cobbler's workbench here where we do any and all of our shoe care. So I have this beautiful, well once beautiful and hopefully soon to be beautiful again pair of chukka boots by Cole Haan. Now I found these at a local thrift store. A pair of boots that normally cost anywhere between $200 and $250. Uh, well, they were on for $14, $13.99. So, thrift shopping is a great way to save money and come across some uh, beautiful old gems. So, we are not going to wear these the way they are that's for sure so let's get right into how to clean polish and protect this beautiful pair of boots so I'm going to take the right boot and do the cleaning and we will keep the left boot for reference so first thing to do when getting anything back home is to clean it first and this is a great time to really take a look at the product, see what wear there is, see if there are any uh, blemishes or any uh, discoloration, any small tears or scratches you may have missed when looking at them in the store. So I'm pleased to report that these are actually in beautiful condition and any wear to them seems to be very surface oriented and uh, cosmetic only. So let's start by looking at the sole because that is the area that generally wears away the fastest and these are in great shape for the soles. You can see the little Cole Haan um, emblem there. You can see they got a little extra rubber around the heel and the toe. That's good because that's where the wear uh, tends to happen most quickly. Um, but everything seems to be in good shape. The treads are in great shape. And um, that is something you really need to look for, especially with a cemented shoe. And what I mean by cemented is that the sole of the shoe and the top of the shoe are uh, fused together using contact cement and it is just heated and they are pressed together um, and that's how they are attached. There is no Goodyear welting, there's no Blake stitch, there's no hand welting. If you look closely there is stitching you can see at the top but that is not real. Uh, that doesn't attach anything to anything. That is just a cosmetic stitch to make it look as though it is Goodyear welted. It is not. So with a cement welted or a cement fused rather a uh, pair of shoes, you are not going to be able to resole them. So once it is worn out, it is worn out and they are done. So you want to make sure to check the sole of any cemented shoes uh, first and foremost because once that's gone there is no going back so as we look at the other areas of the boot here 
you can see this kind of denim blue. I love this blue. It's a major factor in why I picked it up. So it's all leather with a little bit of embossed patterning on it. Uh, that makes it look a bit more casual. Chukkas are very casual to begin with, but this really emphasizes it. So, a hallmark for the Chukka boot is the two or three eyelet um, holes going up for the laces. Now, um, that again makes it more casual, but it brings it from a shoe kind of into a boot. Um, it's really not a winter boot, but excellent for fall and early spring. So as we look at the lacing system, that is going to be uh, the first step in taking care of this, is taking out the laces. So let's do that first here. Any shoes I pick up while thrifting, I always get rid of the laces and put in my own. I have a little hang up about laces. I really want them to look um, as new as possible. So now that those are out, it makes it a lot easier to clean. So let's get right into the cleaning. So I have a cleaning solution here, a gel cleaner um, by Money's Worth and Best, which is a good value product. It's got a little uh, brush on the end where the applicator is, but I have my own brush that I like to use. It's much bigger, much more effective. So I just use the applicator to get the gel on. And you really want to press hard and really feel that come out. And then you just use the applicator just to kind of move it around here. And then we will get into actually brushing. So, let's grab the brush here and really get into it. Now make sure that this is not the same brush you polish with. You do not want that. Uh, you want your polishing brushes to be more fine, less coarse. And here we go, we add a little bit here. There we go, once it's all well distributed that is when we can take a little bit of water and really get this rinsed off let it dry and then come back for step two so I will be right back okay so here we are back and ready to go you want to make sure the sole is brushed really well also um, I like to do that last because it tends to be the dirtiest part of the shoe so get everything kind of brushed and cleaned from the top down and once that's done it's really good with these ridges just to slide the bristles right in there just to loosen up any small debris or stones that happened to be in there. Luckily, that wasn't really the case with these. So, let's move into the next phase, put this away, and go into the conditioning phase. Oh boy. So, uh, severe uh, renovateur is what I've got for conditioner. Um, if you don't have a ton of money to spend on shoe care, um, I would recommend a good conditioner to invest in and uh, maybe less expensive for the other uh, cleaners and polishers. But I think if you're going to really splurge on one item, uh, this is the item to do that with. A little bit goes a long way. So, see there's even some in the cap here. So I just grabbed my uh, Ted Baker microfiber cloth. Um, just nice and a little bit of dabbing now if you have a shoe tree this is great but you can put your hand in there and that works too and that's better uh, for video so I'm just gonna start with a little dab in several different spots um, just a little bit kind of throughout the vamp and the toe 
and then you can kind of work it in nice and easy. You'll notice the leather darkens a little bit. That's okay. It will go back um, similar to the original color. This is just a conditioner. It's not a polisher, so it is not going to make a big difference in terms of the color. So I like to work from the toe back and so we can get a little on the tongue here, a little around the eyelets, making sure not to get any stuck into the eyelets. If you do, just grab a brush and kind of flick it away there. So pop that there. The tongue is a good spot to really work the conditioner in uh, because that is really a focal point of the shoe along with the toe. So now there are a few little blemishes and with a good conditioner it will work out any of those small blemishes. Um, there's even some products if you have deeper scratches um, and that's really good to know because the worst thing is getting a new pair of shoes and then going out once or twice, coming home and finding them scratched. So it would be good if you have polishers, conditioners, cleaners. Um, the next thing to get would be some of that kind of putty uh, leather filler. It's not perfect, it's not going to make them look brand new, and of course the deeper the scratch, um, it will still be a little noticeable, but it certainly makes a big difference. So, we're gonna go through the whole, the whole scene here for the conditioning and polishing, so you can see how it goes every step of the way here. So. That is conditioning done, soul cleaning done. We can put the saphir away and then we just have to look at polishing. Now, you can get polishes in basically any color, but always have a neutral polish on hand. Um, neutral polishes are the best. You don't have to worry about perfect color matching. And somewhat unusual colors like certain shades of blue, um, burgundies, and uh, various other colors may be hard to find matches for. Or if you do find matches, they may be quite expensive. So this has got a little foam applicator, but I still like the microfiber cloth. It gives you a little bit more control. Just fold it the other way uh, if you used it already for the conditioner. So, same thing with the cleaner. You're just going to press and squeeze and a little bit is going to come out there. And then take your microfiber, kind of dab it and really work it, work it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna spend a few minutes and I'm going to do a few different um, areas here. Kind of work every area at first and then focus in on toe and in this case heel caps. But always you want to focus on the toe. So we're going to go through this here and I'll be right back with the finished product. So we are back. We've got this all polished in terms of applying the polish. The next step in the polishing process is going to be uh, a polishing brush. So you have your brush for cleaning. This guy here, little one, we'll put him away and get out our larger kind of catalog of brushes. So. I've got four in here, small one, a couple medium sized ones, and a larger one. So I like this M&B 
one, the bristles are a little longer and the hair is a little finer. It's a boar's hair. So we'll use that guy. And now that it's all applied, we just want to polish going the same way. I like to go in the same direction so it's nice and consistent. And you can start all the way up and slide your way down and really work on the different areas. But notice that we're always working towards the toe. So the toe is really getting a higher polish and the back he heel cap as well. Those are the two areas that I really like to focus in on. Heel cap and the toe. So you could do this for two or three minutes, five minutes, however long you need to get the type of finish you want. Now because this is a casual boot, we are not going to go too much of a gloss. So we're going to go with more of a matte finish. Uh, it just works better for the style of boot. If we're doing a um, black cap toe Oxford, then we would want more of a mirrored finish. You do not want that with these boots. But what you do want is a little bit of protection and that's where you can get with the polishing, you can get that a little bit, but really you want a water and stain protector that is good for leather. So let's put everything away here, clear down and give this a little shake. Doing this outside might be best, but we'll give it a shot uh, in here. I've done other shoes in here. It's not too bad, but if you're very sensitive, um, it does give off quite an odor and it does linger for a while, but I don't mind that too much. Just open a window. So I'll give it a little spray because that's all it takes. You want to make sure the polishes are dry and you just want to give it a little bit of a spray and then you are set. Let that soak in. Give that a little bit of a brush so it gets everywhere and that will help the water to bead when it lands on the shoe and not get absorbed into the leather. So um, that is great for the life of the boot. So give that a little brush. We will let that dry and come right back to it. Okay, so we are back and this has had some time to dry, but I also picked up a little treat for myself the other day. These vintage shoe trees. Uh, if you can find shoe trees at a vintage shop um, that will work for your shoe, if they're wooden, that's great. Um, for a lot of my shoes, I use plastic shoe trees, which also work, but of course, wooden shoe trees are preferred, especially if they are cedar. Um, it is just going to help with the shape of the vamp to help reduce any um, wrinkles or any unnecessary stretching. It really keeps the shape nice. So let's pop this in first. Now what this does is it has a little spring so it can move in and out depending on the size of your shoe. Now if you have extreme sizes like a, a 7 or a 13, you really want to look out for that. So you may need a custom shoe tree in that case. But um, nice wooden shoe trees, especially if they're cedar, will run anywhere from $30 to $50 um, and obviously could even go up from there. So um, you want to get as many as you can afford, uh, but plastic shoe trees also work a lot less expensive. So 
I'm going to put that in here because I notice a little bit of wrinkling around the vamp of the shoe and I really want to keep that um, as minimal as possible. So that's why I'm using the wooden, the cedar trees in these here. So now that that's all done, the cleaning, the polishing, the protecting, the shoe trees, oh, we have got one last thing to do and that is the laces. Now I have a waxed cotton lace here and this is in kind of a violet color, 30 inches in length. So it's got a little bit of length to it, which I love because I really like to make sure I'm not yanking on the laces just to get enough to tie my shoes. So we're gonna pop this under, under pull so that both sides are roughly even and then pop in the other side in the other side and there we have it because there are only two eyelets it's super easy to do if you want to tie them you can see the length this has got a good bit of length but if you do find it too long you can always tuck them right in while you're wearing, but I don't find these laces too long at all. Maybe a 26 or a 24 could work also, but there you have it. We are done with this pair of shoes for now. So I hope that you have had as much fun as I have and hopefully learned a little something about shoe care. So. I am Curtis Allen with Canadian Formal, hoping you will stay stylish. Thank you.